Brothers and sisters, I want to take this opportunity to welcome all of you into this wonderful session. And today we are actually visiting uh, the land of Russia. And Russia is where the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has also a huge following. Uh, uh, following and the church is fully established there. And these are some of the areas that I never thought that actually the church would be there. But it, to my shock, <laughs> that the church is in Russia, surely. For sure, nothing can stop the work from progressing. If the church is actually establishing itself in Russia, nothing can stop the, 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 pro, the, nothing can stop the work from progressing. Okay? So without further ado, let me just invite you so that we can have this session. You're welcome. A nation with a centuries-long history of Orthodox Christianity, passing through periods of great political change in modern times. It's been a religious people who've, whose devotion to their faith has survived anything beyond what we would ever have experienced or even imagined. There's a light here, there's a, a brightness, a, a hope, an excitement. For Latter-day Saint converts like psychologist Galina Goncharova, martial artist instructor Vanek Arutian, and university student Timur Katarov, their individual stories are connected to a time and place few are familiar with, when in 1903, Elder Francis Lyman of the Twelve arrived here, inside the gates of the Summer Garden Park in St. Petersburg, and offered a dedicatory prayer for the gospel to be preached in Russia. It was dedicated again in 1990 by Elder Russell M. Nelson after significant political reforms had come to Russia. The relationship of the government toward believers has now changed, and I believe for the better. In any way, people don't have to be afraid to go to church anymore. Galina says she was touched by her exposure to the church and the kindness of the members she met. She became the first convert to the church after it was re-established. My life changed the moment I was baptized, fundamentally, because I found out that God loves me. And in a bustling city like Moscow, with a population of more than 10 million, there would be others receptive to the church's message, including Vanek Arudian. Today, he works as a martial arts instructor. He first made contact with Mormon missionaries in the city after leaving his home in Armenia in the early 1990s. When I came here to the city of Moscow, I was alone, without my family. I was just a young guy when I left my family and my parents. My mother gave me a gift, a Bible, and said, My son, I won't be with you in person, but know this. When you read this book, you will feel my love. Vanek says that experience prepared him for the message of the missionaries. He now serves as a branch president in central Moscow and shares his life experiences with members as a lay leader in the church. You wouldn't know it from appearances, but Timur Katerov was on a path toward delinquency on the streets of Rostov before his uncle interrupted a dangerous pattern and introduced him to the church. I have a great appreciation to God that I had the opportunity to start everything anew, who I can become and see what I want to see in myself. Timur turned away from his former life on the streets served a mission in Russia, and now studies international affairs. <laughs> it's not always easy to make time for nurturing family life in large metropolitan cities, but for the McKee family in Moscow and the Leostrans of St. Petersburg, the church's message of family togetherness resonates in Russia. We We'd like to share with our friends that there are a lot of wonderful families in the church. And of course, we'd like to share with them that families can be eternal. We build our family relationships and our relationship with our kids on the foundation of Jesus Christ. It's also a quest to rediscover families that have gone on before in Russia, 
Mormon convert Evgeny Numerov speaks four languages and has traced his passion in family history back 14 generations, discovering that some of his forebears lost their lives in defense of their Christian faith. I felt that finding the gospel now when the church was uh, restored, that they're all looking at me and uh, they know that I'm doing the right thing. I'm grateful that they left this legacy for me. I'm grateful that I am a church member. And now, with the dedication of the temple in neighboring Ukraine, church members in Russia say they are finding renewed optimism as they continue to live and serve. Dear brothers and sisters, this is a time where uh, you can see it's, it's actually a, a shock that uh, the church is actually in Russia. I didn't, I didn't even know. And uh, this is something that you, you can actually be able to understand that truly Zion is growing and uh, the Lord is, is really enlightening the borders of Zion. And, and, and it's so amazing to see such wonderful people in Russia you know, who have embraced the gospel and they are very loving to their own families, which is something very great and something to be cherished about. And brothers and sisters, I know the church is true. And I know that we have a living prophet today who is Jerusalem Nelson, who is actually being used of God to even ensure that we are actually, you know, led to the right ways because he receives revelations directly from our Heavenly Father. And I know this is true. And I say this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So thank you very much, my dear brothers and sisters. Looking forward to see you next time. Otherwise, thank you and God bless you.